So my name is John Whistle, I'm from Innovate UK. Um, we were formerly known as the Human Rights Strategy Board, and that will change in August, we've rebranded. Um, what I'm going to do um, is to talk briefly about my organisation, the production, but then about two specific competitions within the agri food uh, programme in Innovate UK. And I'm going to go through the slides quite quickly for three reasons. Um, First being, you, you get copies anyway, so you'll be able to see those. So you plenty of time for questions, but I'm also very conscious it's 3.30 and quite young. Know, so you probably have other places you prefer to be. Um, so, um, Innovate UK, we are um, the UK's um, innovation agency for business, and that, that focus on supporting businesses is really important. Uh, our overall remit is about accelerating economic growth, and that we think is through uh, the business and innovation um, components. And so a lot of our schemes and our thinking is how we might support UK businesses to bring new ideas and technologies more quickly to market. Um, so as I say, it, it is essential to think about that business focus, and in fact I would say that any proposal to innovate UK has a, at its heart a business case. And it's great to do you know, really good science and that's really important and laudable, but that's got to support the business case, which is our kind of primary consideration. Um, and this is where we um, sit on the innovation spectrum, you like. So Justin was saying you, you can't really view innovation to be a linear process, uh, but as far as you can simplify that, this chart is meant to show how we, to an extent, overlap the research councils who fund the majority of university-based research. And it's actually taken through those pre-industrial, industrial research, experimental development stages, um, essentially de-risking the process so that later on in that process, uh, investment houses and VC houses can take it on so that you can develop those production prototypes and eventual commercialization. So, our budget this financial year is 430 million. Um, a lot of that um, goes towards established programs, so you know, uh, already running projects. This chart gives uh, uh, an idea of how that new spend commitment um, breaks down uh, in different areas. Uh, and it also gives you an idea of how we structure ourselves as an organisation. So, these areas, these columns at the top here, um, our societal challenges where we think they're a real market driver for, for, for new innovation. Um, so agricultural food, here we are, 46 million. Um, other societal challenges we recognise as being kind of key for, for the UK. Energy, uh, the built environment, urban living, transport and health and care. But equally important is that below these you have first these on cross cutting capabilities, the high value manufacturing and also some underpinning capabilities of things like advanced materials for science, biosciences, electronic sensor photonics, ICT. And then, you know, that, that doesn't describe the whole picture, so to, there are some other areas, things like uh, the emerging technologies, which you like this kind of nursery for, the really exciting but perhaps somewhat unproven technologies. Um, on the side here, we have resource efficiency and and other developmental work, and of course, space applications over the top. Um, that's one way of cutting it. Another way is to think in terms of the, the tools that we offer to, to business to support um, their innovation activities. Um, so, yesterday we had Brian um, Andy from the, the KTN um, talking about you know, some activities in the food sector for them. Um, the case here, and there are about 120 people in, in that network, and actually that's access to all kinds of networks and expertise and connectivity, um, helping businesses do uh, innovation. I will just mention quickly um, innovation vouchers, which are a tool for companies to have that kind of first engagement with, with the university partner. So it, it's a small amount, it's £5,000, but it allows you to have that kind of initial conversation do some scoping work, and that might lead perhaps to a larger project. And perhaps also SMART, which is our, our dedicated scheme to support SMEs. 
um, so you can get grants of up to £250,000 for, for a range of activities on the smart program. But as I said, I, I sit within this temperamental. The Sustainable Agriculture and Food Innovation Platform, um, which was actually set up um, just about five years ago now uh, as a £90 million um, investment over five years. And the objective very much reflects the kind of perfect storm narrative that we, we saw in the earlier slides, you know, that Sir John Murchison developed. And so the, it's around how we can develop new, new production systems to include producti increase productivity, but at the same time to reduce some of those environmental impacts. So think in terms of uh, reducing waste production, reducing greenhouse group gas emissions, and also um, uh, mitigating for or adapting to the effects of climate change. And I should, of course, recognise our, our co-funders, so DEFRA, BBSRC, Scottish Government, and AHDB. So, how we plan to, or have spent that 90 million by the end of the period uh, is in the form of eight major interventions. And the majority of these are what we call collective research and development competitions. And the idea is that um, companies um, will, work, will work in consortia either with other companies or perhaps with university partners, um, often as to form a, a, a part or even a, indeed as a complete supply chain. And you know they are you know identified around specific challenge areas. So things like new approaches to crop crop protection, the sustainable protein production. Our last foray in food processing and manufacturing efficiency was uh, three years ago, I think. The ones I'm going to talk about today are at the bottom there: the agri food supply chain (KTP) and the improvement food supply chain efficiency. Um, but through those eight interventions, we will have a portfolio of around 170 projects. So that's already quite a, uh, a significant basis to, to think about the future support for innovation in the food sector. And we are at the moment developing the case for the next five years of activity for the innovation platform. Uh, clearly that's something we need to take to our government board for their approval, uh, but that is very much you know, building on what we have achieved with these, these competitions. So, the first competition I'm going to talk about is the Agri-Food Supply Chain KTPI. I, I realise I've, I've used the acronym without defining, which is a classic error. Nitrogen plant transfer partnerships are actually quite a, uh, an established scheme. They go back almost 40 years. Um, and they are... We found them to be a very effective mechanism to help companies develop or bring in a new capability to their organisation. Um, so the, the scenario is that you know, a company wishes to exploit a new market opportunity or has a, an issue that it needs to, to address. Um, it cannot do that without developing a new capability. That capability at a conceptual level may exist with the university partner, but there's some translation activity necessary to make that work for that company's content. So what that takes a form of is a project that can be between six months to three years in duration, but more typically is around two years, where you get an associate who's a recently qualified graduate that works typically on the company's site. Um, effectively, you have some consultancy uh, bundled in from the academic. And yeah, over that period of time, during the course of that project, hopefully you will address that issue. Um, so the funding rates, um, it's, it's more generous uh, for SMEs, they can get up to 67% funding, uh, large enterprises can be 50% funding. The annual cost we think is around um, £70,000. Um, so you know, it, it is a relatively small scale project, but hopefully it's very well targeted for the company's needs and, and will be um, very effective. Um, an important part of the process is that we have a network of KTP advisors, 24 of them, who work with the company university partner to firstly understand whether it is indeed a, a KTP project that they are looking at and help them to go through that kind of pre-qualification process. So by the time you've gone through that, actually 
Um, by the time we receive the applications, we see high success rates, so 90 percent success rates. Now that's something that comes to mind, you know, very attractive that, yes, there is that uh, initial pre-work, but once you've gone through that, you, you, feel, you can feel fairly confident that you will get support. And as I say, KTPs have been running for almost 40 years, and they have operated as a, a kind of general scheme, scheme across many sectors of, of the economy. Um, what we are increasingly doing now is to run, run what we call thematic KTP competitions you know, for a particular sector or technology focus. Uh, and, and that is what I'm about to talk about now. Um, and I think we've heard from several speakers today and, and yesterday you know, the many and substantial challenges that um, face the sectors of things like home food security, um, how we deal with coping environmental stresses, um, in relation to, to diet and, and, and all those uh, health conditions. And we've, we've heard also about you know, the need for food safety, authenticity, and traceability. So clearly, there's a lot of significant problems to address. When we looked at the portfolio, we realised that only 50 KTPs have been funded as being ag food since 2007. Um, but actually, if you look in a little bit more detail, they occur in many other sectors like engineering, sustainability, uh, energy. So actually, there's a real demand for these kinds of, of products uh, from the agri food sector. So we started doing around and speaking to potential co-funders. Uh, and with, with a lot of success, so there are, there are eight, eight co-founders in that slide. Um, that makes this the largest thematic um, KTP competition uh, in the UK has run, and the total cost is 2.3 million. So that we think is around 25 projects. Um, so we we are we, we opened this competition back in June of this year. It's open through to um, the middle of February, uh, and we, we can already see a pipeline applications. Uh, and hopefully there will be a, a really strong portfolio going forward. But it's still open, so I'm advertising the opportunity. Um, it's a very good way of working universities, um, you know, in a, in a company-friendly way. Um, and I commend it to you. Now, just to go through the, the, the scope, um, and, and this is typical of how we, we pitch these competitions. We will um, present some high-level challenges and then some examples of some approaches. So the scope expands so the complete agri-food supply chain, but it has those three priority areas. So innovation for consumer health, and quality of well being, because it's hidden by the image, and choice. Um, improving productivity, resource efficiency, and resilience in the supply chain, and also assuring safety and security in the supply chain. So that's a high level scope. As I said, we, we give some examples, and you'll see these in even more detail. These are just headlines. You'll, you'll, you'll find the supporting paragraphs in the competition file. Um, but I hope, you know, as you scan through those, you'll, you'll recognise that it, it does cover a, a, a wide range of approaches, and hopefully be attracted to a, a, a wide range of companies. <coughs> How many times? So next I'd like to talk about this competition, Improving Food Supply Chain Efficiency. Um, so this is a collective research and development competition. And as I said before, they, they tend to be larger projects, um, often involving putting the supply chain together to, to work collaboratively. Um, when we design these competitions, we like to you know, ground truth our thinking by looking um, at some of the existing industry reports and, and talking to people in industry. I'm not going to go through these um, in any detail now, but I will highlight that image that we were fortunate to like, which came from a report through the um, Food and Drink Federation, um, I think 18 months ago now. Uh, and actually, when you look at the detail of the competition, a lot of it corresponds to some of the areas they identifying that, that kind of orange um, segment. So, you know, we, we think that we, we are um, aiming the competition in an industry relevant space. Um, then it's a case of thinking about what the, the scope is, what format the competition might take. So 
within this competition, um, there is a total competition budget of uh, 11 million pounds. Um, projects need to be uh, business led. And essentially it's about improving the resource efficiency and resilience on, of the food and drink supply chain. So again, we, we break that down into to four areas of high, high level scope. So it's about reducing production waste. It's about using various resources more efficiently. Uh, it's about improving food productivity uh, and that food manufacturing process and productivity. It's also about um, improving resilience of the food supply chain. Um, in particular, thinking about you know, what might be the changes in raw material quality and composition that might take place, you know, perhaps as impacts of climate change. It's always important to understand exactly what the boundaries are in terms of the scope of the competition. And for this one, we exclude any, any innovation related to primary production. So if it's about growing a crop, if it's about rearing livestock, that's not within scope. Um, beyond that, if it's some kind of on-farm process to improve storage, that would be in scope. And of course, that goes from all the way through to retail and dealing consumer. So the project's um, size can be between 250k to a million pounds and a duration of three years. Now, I see that I, I'm being hassled to conclude my presentation now. Um, there is more detail on the scope on the, on the next few slides and within the flyer, and I'm around to take any questions as you can. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I appreciate it.